Hi everybody, my name is Rob Grote and I'm going to teach you a lesson on writing recursive functions uh, with the example of factorials in mind. I'm going to try to be a little bit more uh, friendly and concise uh, like any good teacher should be in this video. So first off we're going to do a factorial function recursively and then we're going to do it iteratively just to show you how it's done either way. And there are all sorts of variations on these. This, there isn't just one right way to do it. Uh, but let's get underway. So basically a factorial is just like a series of numbers multiplied together um, down till you get to one. So if we did like five factorial, uh, that would be equal to five, uh, where's my times? Five times four times three times two times one. And now that we've gotten that out of the way, um, you can see that there's a definite pattern here and it's pretty obvious. But how do you code this in? Um, well, and let me just put that into markdown using my new markdown abilities. Oh, that didn't come out right. Never mind. You get the idea. Um, and the other thing I just want to say is zero factorial is actually equal to one by definition. Oh, we're not going to do negative numbers. Oh, that's weird. Why did that evaluate to true? Oh, zero is not equal to one. <laughs> There's Python for you, misinterpreting and everything. But factorials themselves, writing out the function. Let's do the recursive one right now. We're going to see def factorial and we just want a number that's all that we want to be put in n which stands for number um, and basically whenever we do recursion we want to have two or more cases we want to have a base case uh, which is going to be sort of like our tree stump uh, and then we want to have a general case so if you're thinking of like cutting down a tree uh, most of the time you're hacking away at the tree right with an axe and then when you get to the bottom you need a big shovel to take out the stump so we're going to need a different tool for our general case than we need for our base case just like you would use an axe and then a shovel I really like that metaphor but we're going to say that the base case is when n is equal to 1 um, oh, I have to do an if statement if n equals equals 1 then what do I want it to do? If I gave it a function just, if I said I want the factorial of 1, I would want it to return 1 to me, right? Exactly, because 1, I don't need to multiply it by anything, it's just 1. So we'll say return 1. And I'm thinking that the way that I set up this base case now, I'm going to want to be taking down my number, that is n, uh, all the way step by step until I get to one. So a nice easy way to do that is to say uh, else colon return and now I have to do a little bit of a little bit of intuition here. I have to think about well what is it going to mean to have a general case that's going to get me down to the base case. If and and the easiest way for me to think of it is just to say why don't I give myself an example. If it were the number two, just the next number up, what would I want it to do? I would want it to first take one and then I would want it to multiply that by two. I would want to do one times two, two times one, same thing, no matter which way you say it, um, commutative property. So that can best be represented by n times fact, well, n times what is here, two times one. Uh, but that'll come up later. So I want to have that in place of that one. I'm going to put factorial of n minus one. And so now, every time that this function is called, it's going to call itself when it's over uh, one. So I'm just going to put that into the interpreter. And now I'm going to say factorial of two. Let's check and make sure two works. So two works just like I thought it would. And if we go through the flow of execution, it says uh, okay, I'm going to call a function that I remember. It calls factorial. Factorial of 2 is my argument uh, for the parameter n. If n equals 1, does n equal 1? No, n equals 2. So we're going to go over to the else. And at the else it says return n. So it doesn't, it doesn't think n here. It thinks 2. Return 2 times factorial. Oh, let me go back up here. Uh, of n minus 1. Actually, this is resolved before it does factorial, I believe, since it's in parentheses. So it says 2 times fact times 2 factorial. It resolves this, and then it says, let me call this function. And then it says 
factorial of one, and it says if n equals one, n does equal one, so now it says return one. So one gets returned over here in this spot, and then it says, and this is all within this one line of code that this is occurring, that it goes back up here and then goes down here. Uh, then it says return two times one, and Python knows that two times one is two, and that's why I'm getting this here. Um, same thing goes for the later cases, except that this cheat just keeps getting called more and more times. Um, it's going to return this function, then it does it again and again and again and again. Uh, and just keep going through that flow of execution until you feel really comfortable with it. Because when I'm struggling with a problem, I go through the flow of execution, and that usually leads me to the right answer. Now let's go through it iteratively. Um, oh, actually, I forgot one other case. So if I want to do factorial of zero here, it just says what? what is going on it says recursion error maximum <laughs> recursion depth exceeded in comparison now, I'm not going to go through this error um, but uh, basically there's no way that the zero case is going to fit in here so I'm just gonna make another case I'm gonna say L if uh, oh, oops I have to put it on this line n equals equals zero then return one and that's just a little other case it's a little bit brute forcey but what can you do about it um, and voila now we have factorial zero equals one so let's just check all of our factorials let's check the factorial one same thing as factorial zero factorial three we get six and let's try something fun factorial 100 oh my gosh I don't want to see that now let's do it iteratively when we use iteration, we're not really thinking of a base case and a general case. I'm just thinking a little bit more intuitively. For me, iteration comes more intuitively. I don't know if it will for you, but maybe I'll try to explain my thinking um, and see if that does any good here. It, a lot of it just comes through practice uh, and coding as many things as you possibly can. So we're going to define a new function called iterative factorial of n same parameter we want to use the exact same function otherwise and um, this isn't really a base case this is an exception that I'm handling if n is equal to 0 then I'm going to return 1 uh, so we don't really need a base case here the way that I like to think of a base case uh, is going to be coming in my else section so if n equals 0, we want our iterative factorial to return 1, because if we have 0 factorial, that's 1 by definition. Um, but if it's 1, we could just say from 1 to what number uh, do we want to multiply all the numbers? And I'm going to kind of think of this as the reverse of what we did before. Before, we were kind of chopping down our way to get to 1. This time, I'm thinking we're going to go 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, instead of 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which we did in recursion. Um, and I'm going to do it like this, else product equals 1, uh, and that just seemed like a good place to start to me because anything times 1 is equal to itself, so that makes sense as like a sort of a, a foundation upon which we're multiplying when we're creating our factorial. And then I'm going to do the iterative part for i in range from 1 inclusive up to n plus 1, and that's exclusive. This will not be in the range because it's it's at the second uh, parameter position, which, as you remember, is excluded. And we're going to say product times equals i. So it's going to go from 1, and then it's going to multiply the product by i, and it's going to go to 2, and multiply the product by i, and product's going to keep updating throughout here. Um, so we don't have to worry about it resetting or something like that because there's no reason for it to do that. And then we're going to return product at the end. Be careful not to put it here or you will get the wrong result. Um, and I think I think that's the easiest way for me to explain it. That just you want to have this as sort of like your canvas base layer. If we were doing a add every number from one to five, then I would have my sum start at zero. Just try to think of it in ways like that. Probably after more experience, this will come natural to you. Um, so I'm going to define my function, and now I'm going to do iterative factorial of, let's do 3. That was simple before. So we get 6 
Let's do zero, make sure our base case, or not our base case, our exception is resolved as we think it will be. Let's do one, it just says for i in range from one to one, so it just multiplies one by one. Um, and let's try our crazy one again, 100. So it looks like it's coming out to be the same thing. Uh, the last thing I wanna say is just this little notation here, if you missed what I was saying here, um, you could also do product equals product times i. Uh, it's the same thing, it's just a more concise way of writing it and it's what the cool people use. Alright, so thanks for watching this video. Uh, let me know if I explained everything alright. Uh, I hope it helped you with iteration and recursion. And I'll see you guys in another video uh, for more just general coding tips.